And I'm delighted uh, that uh, I'm joined by Shane McCarthy here, the evergreen Shane McCarthy, who's at every single startup event in the history of Ireland uh, at the moment. Uh, Shane, first of all, thanks for joining us. It's really Pleasure good to, to have you. Um, we talked a number of times over the past kind of six months, and in particular in the lead up to, to WhatsApp and stuff like that, about obviously things that are happening on the west side of Ireland, startups and businesses. At an event like this, do you get an impression or an idea as to what direction the startup scene is going in Ireland, or in, in this case in the West? I would say you do. We're beginning to. In the past, I don't think you did. We're beginning to know because you can see a new type of person coming to these events. You can see a new network arriving to these events. Mm. More importantly, you start hearing little subtle stories about startups along the, the Southwest Corridor, the Enterprise Corridor that are actually building serious momentum and are so-called off the radar. So you're beginning to see that a, an ecosystem is building. That's what was up is built to support. Um, and you're beginning to see that there's traction being made in the in the regions, like guys down here today from Leitrim, you know, with Cork, Galway, Limerick, and a lot of these counties represented. You were talking about uh, one of the panel discussions about ecosystems. Yeah. A uh, very interesting discussion. Um, I was interested to kind of understand or try and find out, because a lot of people talk about ecosystems and they talk about the communities and so on and so forth. But ultimately, what is the end game for an ecosystem? What is, what is it supposed to look like? Because we talk a lot about it, but not what we want the end result to be. Well, for me, the ecosystem is having an appropriate infrastructure that builds a landscape that allows startups to scale in the right type of community with the right supports. And I don't mean just the right financial supports, I mean the fact that as a startup founder, you're in a lonely place. As a startup founder, it's really, really hard. And you need people around you who can help you through those moments. And the sad reality, whether people want to admit it or not, is family and friends cannot help you through it because they do not understand. So to me, in its more simple form, the ecosystem that we're creating in Limerick is going to have an infrastructure there. So students coming out of college, students in secondary school, primary school, or people who want to leave the workforce and build startups can jump into this community that's already there. There's successful people and people who are scaling there and that they're on the way up. I'll tackle you about something that you said in there a yeah. little bit later, but I wanted to have a chat with you about that too while you're there. But in terms of the creating those right facilities, we talk a lot about I suppose getting the right people on board. How do we determine who the right people are? Because you know, there's there are places where the I suppose the powers that be are in those areas are very encouraging. You go in and you're, they they want everything to do with startups, and what they you go to other places and they can barely formulate uh, a sentence about what a startup should be. I'll answer your question with a question: How do you know that somebody you hire is good for your company? They deliver results. It's not all talk, it's a lot of action, and they add tangible value. That's my answer. If a person is getting involved in a company, a multinational, higher education, in the startup community, I don't want to hear the bullshit of, we can do all of this stuff, well, didn't do it. That's what we've done here. You're doing it in the media space, we're doing it in the startup space, we're doing it in the social media space. It's not talk. You can tangibly see through this event and a variety of others, that's action. So people who, companies, institutions that want to get involved in the startup scene or are saying that they're supporting it, well, you'll see it. And if they're not, much like some of my questions you would have seen inside, it's not all rosy dozy, it's not all airy fairy. You want companies who are going to put their money where their mouth is, that are going to put manpower behind it, that are going to give you the support that's needed to get the results, the desired results you want, and like your question on the ecosystem. I wanted to get a, I suppose, a snapshot of the startup scene in Ireland at the moment. There's a lot of talk of, I suppose, finance, venture capital. You had a really good investor panel this morning as well. Yeah. Really, really interesting stuff. Is the reality of creating a scene, a, a, a finance scene in terms of venture capital and angel investors and halo investors and all these kind of different aspects, is that you need to create the startups to entice them in and that it's not good enough to turn around and say, well, they should be here. They're not going to come here unless the standard of startup is here for them to come to, I think to be a part of. It's threefold to me. 
I think strand number one is you need to have an infrastructure like we're saying with the community and with the ecosystem. Strand number two is you need to have governmental support like in the UK in comparison to here where you have EIS schemes where there's way more return for angels coming in so people high up in multinationals, people who have exited startups so they can reinvest their money. And then that's it. the third thing is you need to have this ethos that startups are ready to scale and not exit. One of the points brought up was, oh, it's a, you know, it was like it was okay that startups exit early in Ireland. To me, that's not okay. You know, we're building a company organically grown, and what's up like this is going to make us very little money. It's not the point. There's lots of other stuff we do that make us lots of money, but the moral of the story being, we're going to grow a big company, and we're going to hit huge targets. But the moral being. This is our journey, it's our dream, it's our ambition. You know, if we, if the, going back concisely to your question, if the appropriate infrastructure is in place, if you're incentivizing it for investors to come in and spend more money due to government policies, and if you have more of a community ethos with better startups willing to take the risk and trying to move forward. But surely a company that builds itself up to enough of a success and exit it's still a success I mean, oh, you, you know, you it is one million percent but Cause they, because they exit but do doesn't you think, mean they, it's a bad idea I, I fully agree but do you think that more soccer players wanted to play soccer when Roy Keane was famous or more soccer players wanted to play soccer now that John Walters is there and I like John Walters but he's not Roy <laughs> Keane you get me? Yeah. You know, why not just skill like when Robbie Hinshaw becomes a big name in the Irish rugby scene guess what? loads of young fellas will want to play rugby so there's companies exiting for really good money but when you hear of teamwork growing organically 400,000 customers in car you're going okay that 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 motivates a company like us to say actually we can do this and that's what you want you want a benchmark within your own country and don't get me wrong I'm dead proud of the companies that have exited and they're on their own journey so they're well entitled to make their own decision but at the core I'm just simply saying if you have poster companies there to showcase like team or what can be done you will incentivize or motivate other people to try to do the same thing if you if you take that kind of uh, tact as well though if you look at somebody like AMCS yeah. here in Limerick who in my opinion, will undoubtedly at some point be bought out yeah. or taken over in the next two or three years. Definitely. They're too good enough. They're too yeah, good not. Definitely. And what they're doing is disrupting a space that needs desperately to be disrupted. What will they be bought out for? If they have 75 million investment so far, hmm. if they have 100, 200 million turnover, you could be talking about the first billion euro exit of a company in Limerick. Now, how many more startups do you think are going to jump in the startup scene over the next few years because of that? And that's, that answers our, the question before. Mm. It's going to motivate companies like ours, companies like Kira Normal, JP Hartigan, to go, actually, maybe I'll hold on to this a small bit longer. Maybe I'll take that extra bit of risk. Mm. And maybe, you know, it just inspires us. Um, I saw you doing your Facebook Live yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and you mentioned it briefly there in the answer to one of my questions, which was talking about uh, sacrifice yeah. as a startup and what you have to do to survive and keep growing and so on. And interesting enough, I asked the same question to Kevin Holler, yeah. who shut down Human because he was, he was getting to the point where he was he was literally said I was going to die because we were we needed to go in for another round of investment and that wasn't going to come through till possibly January or February next year. And he was already getting anxiety attacks, panic attacks, etc. So in terms of that kind of mentality, how much do you sacrifice as a small business? Because surely putting yourself on the altar of a startup or a small business and going, take me, and it takes all of your life, it takes all of your time, it takes everything of your life. Really? Surely that's not the way or the result of, but of where you want blown. to go. Kevin didn't mishandle his business, he mishandled himself. And my job is, and I'm just, I have to be honest, as you know, I always am. Yeah. The job of a CEO of a startup, whether it's Kieran Norma, myself, JP, like some of my closest friends, your job is to manage yourself. Your job now is you scale through your company, and you're, I mean, you're booming at the moment. But your biggest challenge isn't going to be taken on clients. 
your biggest challenge isn't going to be hiring people. Your biggest challenge is time. How do I handle Keelan? I don't even think it's time. It's how do I handle Keelan's mm. mentality to make this okay? So people look at me and they go, Shane, it's a sacrifice. I have sacrificed a whole lot, but I'm a firm believer that you're in the top 2% in the world if you're living your dream. Just think about that. So I may have sacrificed a lot, but I'm sacrificing a lot to be in 2% of the world. Mm. I'm okay with that. And not only am I okay with that, but the biggest thing I'm beginning to learn about me is learning how to be the best that I am. If things go well, they go well. If they go poor, they go poor. But I'm okay with that. And sometimes it'll be harder, sometimes it'll be easier, sometimes I'll purposely put more challenges in front of myself, sometimes I won't. But the whole goal here is like... Maybe you're just a sucker for punishment. <laughs> I am, and this, but this is a very valid point because Ed Kavanagh mentioned a point, uh, made a point last night when we were um, in the hotel and he said something very... It, it just felt home, hit home. He said, I think some people are born to go to war. And he's go, I will go to war every day and I would go to war every night and I would enjoy every single minute of it. And that, maybe that's unique about me, and maybe I'm a bit different from Kevin, and maybe I'm being a bit higher than that scenario. But my, my honest opinion is for any founder, whether you're introverted, extroverted, whether you're scaling organically or through funding, my biggest piece of advice to CEOs and founders at the moment and partners is you really have to start understanding how to manage who you are yourself and how you're going to execute your dream. The byproduct of that will be your company and how you manage that. I'd agree with that up to a certain point, but I would probably be on the opposite side of you. I have, I have kids, yeah. house, all the bills and all the frustrations and all the fun that comes, that comes yeah, with that, it. right? I go to war every day I get up yeah. because I have to. But on the other side, I also realize that you can't put happiness in a bank either and hope that in three years time it's gained enough interest for you to grab all that back. And then you wake up three years' time, you're successful, you have enough money to do everything you want, go on the holidays, all that kind of stuff, and then you wake up and you go, uh, now I'm going to go back and try and see if I can get all the happiness that I should have had three but years ago. It doesn't see, work like that. I am happy. This is the thing. If you were to say that 20 people turned up today for Was Up, I'd be happy <laughs> because nobody created Was Up on the Oz. Nobody tried to solve the problem with this disconnect along this corridor on the Oz. Um, four years ago, I didn't have a laptop. I didn't have the internet in my house. And in four years time, you can be one of the people who can actually get people to attend an event, build a brand, manage a team. I'm happy, we're successful now. Will we become more successful? Yeah. But you better believe the biggest change that has come in me over the last four years is, I always thought I was gonna be happy, like you said, when I reached my dream. Now I'm realizing this is my dream. So that's why I'm happy. You won't see me sad, you can ask my partners, you won't see me frustrated. Is this hard? It's really difficult. Oh yeah, you obviously. You have to make yeah, loads of sacrifice, is, yeah. unbelievable amount. But am I happy every day? I love my job. I love going to war every day <laughs> and every night. And you're going to be happier still because uh, Shane's first car is going to be a BMW, apparently, as well, in the yeah, next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I can't <laughs> wait for that as a well. A 2.6 litre first car. Yeah, I'll come back to you and tell you, tell you what kind of car, or ask you what kind of car. how long it took you to wrap it into a lap post. Um, but listen, it's always great to talk to you. I Thank always you have so much fun uh, chatting with you about uh, the scene and everything like that, uh, and everything connected with it. There's no point in going unless you give us a bit of a, a plug for your own business, Blue Chief. Yeah, Blue Chief, I mean, we're doing really well. We're going to a team of 11 now. Um, social media for startups, multinationals, higher education and SMEs. Um, doing really well building strategies, launching really tangible campaigns. I got a client four weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. They've had a 3,000% increase in engagement and exposure online and not just reach, actual engagement. Mm. So we're getting stronger, campaigns are getting better, getting more traction and uh, yeah, the future is pretty bright. Absolutely fantastic website. Bluechief.ie. Go and check it out yet. <laughs> We're launching a new website at the end of next week. It will probably be launched in and around the 25th. People can so put it in their diaries. They can check June it out. Canada. The 25th of June, bluechief.ie. Um, brand new website, brand new content, brand new brand. We love it. Fantastic. Shane McCarthy, always a pleasure, man. Thank you very much, Keelan.